So I met a lady relatively recently. I start a lot of homilies with that, don't I? Uh, not that I meet ladies. I mean, I mean, I mean, I meet people. Uh, but anyway, I, I find I find it very interesting to speak to people, and from their conversations, it's a, a very interesting. See, I guess I'm practical. I've started ten thoughts. I haven't finished one. Um, I'm practical, so when I see a problem, I want to fix the problem. Uh, so when I see an issue in someone's life, I guess I'm always thinking, you know, what does God want to do here? How does God want to intervene? What can be done? How, what can I do? Is there anything I can do to help? Uh, so I was talking to this lady, and uh, uh, I said, but lovely spell of weather, isn't it? She said, yeah, yeah, the forecast now for the weekend, it's going to get very hot, very hot, frightening. And I, 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 you know, when you, when you kind of think you misheard, Ireland, frightening because of the heat, that would be a first, that really, wouldn't it, wouldn't it? And then I remember actually a conversation that we had a couple of months back, uh, where it was, it was going to be a very wet week. Oh, I've seen the forecast, it's going to mill rain for the whole week. Frightening. It's Ireland, we're, we're kind of used to it. I don't know, there's nothing really frightening about a week of rain, I mean. It's just kind of normal, really, isn't it? Never mention, not, not to mind, like, things that might actually be slightly frightening, uh, even though we're at the end of, the, uh, end of Europe, like maybe, you know, things in the Ukraine, the situation there, which uh, is disconcerting, at least. But it's just, it's just this, this, it was an interesting thing where, where her default reaction to most things was frightening. <laughs> whatever, whatever's happening, or there's always elections coming up, frightening. It's just, it was just kind of an interesting thing that to, to, to live in that kind of constant state of fear, of practically everything frightening her. And so that, that's, that's an interesting, interesting, kind of sad way to live, actually. Because rather than everything being frightening, I mean, I, I, and this is something that, I, look, it's something that's easy to preach about. I have to live this as well. But to see everything as an opportunity rather than a threat. You know, so when there's a difficult situation, this is my opportunity now to pray. This is my opportunity to go deeper. It's my opportunity to learn to renounce myself or to overcome my own laziness or emotions or whatever it is and, uh, and bring the Lord into it. You know, every situation, every difficult situation, every sad situation, every cross is an opportunity. Very, very easy to say. Not so easy to live, but still true. It's still true. Every, every cross, every difficulty, every, every obstacle is an opportunity. So, like, and this, this sometimes you, you see this in people, which is, which is such a wonderful example, you know, when things go wrong, things, they, they fail at something, or someone passes away, right, and, and their reaction is to cling on to the Lord, to go to the chapel more often, to pray more, Do you know, and you see, wow, that's, that's just such an example, such a powerful witness to when things are, are going wrong, rather than kind of retreating into oneself or worse again retreating into some sort of an addiction numb the pain distract myself keep busy keep texting working moving keep doing stuff so I don't have to think uh, and then of course your thoughts don't actually ever believe they don't they're not actually ever sufficiently suppressed they're always there all they need is a little silence and they're back up again so all of this all of this that we're trying to do to to to, to distract ourselves and the the, the the busyness of, of life, just so we don't have to think, so we don't have to think about how bad things are, actually, rather than saying, Lord, things are a bit of a mess here, and I need your help now. I need your help now. I need you. I'm in a storm, and I need you. I, it's, and I think that is something that we can and, 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 and need to learn. I don't think it's... Um, I don't know, maybe... Forgive me if I say it this way, maybe it sounds unpriestly, but I don't believe it's a kind of a once-off grace moment where suddenly my faith has increased exponentially and everything is easy and prayer is easy and I can trust myself to the Lord easily and it's all... I don't think it works that way. I think for most people, it's like weightlifting, right? You start with, with average weights, you get your form right, and then you increase the slightly heavier weights, and then once you have good form, you can start increasing the weight and so on and so forth, and then you start getting strong. Okay. Uh, I think that's how it works with with faith as well, where if I can trust the Lord in the small things, I'd be able to trust him in the medium things. If I can trust him in the medium things, maybe I can trust him with the big things. If I don't trust him with the small things, I will never trust him with the big things. I won't. I won't, like. I mean, if I wake up in the morning and, you know, say, say you're, a married, you're a married man, for example, and you wake up in the morning and there's a text on your phone from some pretty girl who 
you met playing tennis the week before. And she's like, hey, big boy. Uh, and you know, you know, you know, you should not respond. Okay? This is going to go nowhere good. My dear wife and kids are wonderful people. I'm also her husband and their father. That's my priority, not this one here. Okay, so I know, I know, I know, I now have an opportunity. And I know also, like, if, if I'm practicing my faith, this <laughs> little voice of my conscience, little voice of my guardian angel, and maybe the good Lord himself will be inside my heart saying, back off, brother. Do not respond. Do not engage. Do not engage. You know you shouldn't. Yeah, but look, it's only a text. And so it begins. You know, there's that little compromise. I don't trust the Lord with the little things. And then, um, we're not saying it, it, that kind of thing it in, invariably leads to, to adultery, but like, that's how it starts. You know, so if I trust the Lord with the little things, then I can trust him with the medium things. It's like, like when people start discerning a religious vocation, they want God to tell them, Lord, what is my vocation? Am I called to be married? Am I called to be single? Am I called to religious life? What is the story? And they, more or less, they do, they do want to know the answer. They do. They do. I think, though, on occasion, they want, kind of want the answer for free. They want the answer quickly. I'd just like to know. It'd be good, like, out of interest. Rather than, do you want to pray a rosary every day for the next six months and see then what the Lord will reveal? Do you want to attend Mass regularly now, like every week, um, and purify your life of, of, of whatever is getting in the way of you hearing the Lord, and then listen? Are you willing to do something rather than, um, I just like someone to tell me what my vocation is? Are you willing to actually work for it? And I heard an expression during the week, which I thought was very wise, one of those meme things uh, where... Memes. I know they're called memes. Okay. Uh, where it just it was just one of those yeah, nicely written uh, things where it says, "Don't ask what's wrong. Ask what's possible. Don't ask what's wrong. Ask what's possible. What's wrong? That's easy. That is easy. And this can also happen within Christian or Catholic circles as well. Where what's wrong? Oh my goodness, where to start? Sorry, where to stop? Like, do you know, I mean, there's just such an abundance of things and so many things that we could consider frightening uh, as regards, you know, governmental policies and gender ideology and just the way the internet uh, has, has really actually changed culture and changed mindset and affected family life. Have you ever been, have you been to a restaurant? And have you been to a restaurant within the last, like, three months? It's the saddest thing in the world, right? A family sitting at a table. And what are they doing? What are they doing, people? What are they doing? A whole family. Dads and mothers included. Like, there's, they might as well be at home. Why are you paying for an expensive meal? You might as well throw on some pasta and a bit of chopped up vegetables and stuff and save yourself 100 euro and do that at home. Waste of time. I saw a little, another meme thing uh, where in a restaurant in Australia, they give a 10% reduction if you use these little basket cage type things uh, for the phones. So everyone at the table has to put their phone into it, then it's kind of locked, and you eat your meal. And it's just very funny, because you see all the kids just staring at the basket, just going. <laughs> and the dad's like. <laughs> but everyone else is just kind of staring, just waiting for the meal to be over so they can get back onto their phones. But it's the weirdest thing. Have we lost the art of conversation? It's frightening. <laughs> Have we, like? Oh, it's just ridiculous. Do you know, so, but all of this then just kind of allows us to live in this kind of imaginary world, in this fantasy world, in this la-la-la land, uh, rather than live and love the people around us. Rather than learn to, to live my life with the Lord. Learn to recognize what my crosses are and how they're affecting me and how, Lord, I need you in this problem and in this other problem and for this person. And to learn them to bring them to the Lord. This is all preparation for heaven, guys. This is all in preparation for intercessory life, where I recognize people's needs, and because of that, I bring them to God. I raise them to the Lord. I raise them to the Lord. That's what we should be learning here, so that we can do it for all eternity in heaven, just praising him, raising everyone to him. So these are habits that we learn now, 
rather than just focusing on, on all the negative, as I say, there's a ton of negative stuff out there, uh, rather than focusing on what's wrong, focus on what's possible. So what is possible? Can you pray today? Yes, we'll do it. Can you forgive today? Maybe. We'll try. Is there someone you can contact or a relationship that you can try and repair? Pray about it. Do it today. If that's what the Lord if that's where the Lord is guiding you. Interestingly, like during the week we we read a reading from St. Paul, right? When he was in, in Corinth. Now St. Paul, like he has such an uh, such an important vocation. Like he's such an amazing missionary, but then also in, in our day, not just his missionary efforts, but his writings. Uh, so many like the, the the largest part of the New Testament is written by him. So such an important vocation. From a human perspective, it makes no sense why the Lord would have allowed certain things, right? Why spend so much time in prison? Why be brought to Rome and decapitated there in Tre Fontane? Why not give him another 20 years of more letters and more writings and more mission? And uh, Just why allow so much adversity in his life? And not only that, but there was a, when he was in Corinth then, passing through and he meets Aquila and Priscilla, and uh, they're tent makers. And he says, oh, I'm a tent maker. So he sits down and starts making tents. And you think, surely he has more important things to do. There's like a whole world to evangelize. And you're sitting down making tents. But like for St. Paul, what was important? What was important is just do the next right thing. Do the next right thing. And it's, it's amazing where that next right thing might bring. It's also amazing where the next, you doing the next right thing may have hugely positive consequences in other people's lives. A friend of mine years ago, uh, from Tremor actually, gave me a book uh, called 100, by Jason Everett called 100, 100, what's it called? If You Really Loved Me, it's called If You Really Loved Me. And it's got 100 questions, 100 questions and answers on relationships and sexuality. And that was the basis of all of the, the talks I used to give in, in secondary schools about relationships and sexuality, because it was just so well written, so well researched, with good humor, but solid facts as well, and solid teaching, solid Catholic teaching. So, and I remember like on a few occasions, drawing from that book in, in, in confessions and in conversations with people. So I learned from that book. So this guy gives me the book as a gift. I learn from it and I pass on that information to others. I have no idea how that has affected other people. Maybe it has even saved a life. Maybe there was a girl out there who was considering an abortion and we got talking about it and because of it, because of what I said, she didn't. So now there's a, some little 10 year old child running around somewhere because of me. Uh, please don't misunderstand that. A uh, 10 year old child running around because the mom didn't have an abortion, okay? Uh, so, like there's, so there's a whole life. Who then will grow up and get married and have kids of her own? Trace that all back to what? This friend of mine giving me a book 10 years ago. Just do the next right thing. Just do the next right thing. Now, we don't have to worry about everything that is very, very wrong out there, but just don't focus on what's wrong. Focus on what's possible. And let the Lord be Lord of this world. Amen. The following is a special appeal by Father Patrick Cahill. Dear brothers and sisters, thank you so much for joining us uh, for these homilies on YouTube or whatever podcast media you're listening to us on. Uh, it's a great privilege to be able to serve you all in this way. Uh, if I could ask you please to pray for us here in Holy Family Mission. We're heading into our eighth year of uh, faith formation for the young people who are attending here. And it's a great gift and privilege to be able to work here. But we would ask if you would pray for us and pray for all of our intentions here as well, that we can continue this work. And if you feel the Lord is in any way calling you or asking you to support us financially, we would greatly appreciate that too. So if you go to, onto our website, holyfamilymission.ie, there's a donate button there, and we'd greatly appreciate uh, your donations so that we can keep this work going. Uh, it does, unfortunately, cost uh, a bit to run this place, so uh, our, we greatly rely on our benefactors. And, of course, we play, pray for all of our benefactors' needs, especially on Wednesday, the day traditionally dedicated to St. Joseph, the Father of all providence so thank you so much uh, in advance for your prayerful support and also for those who are able to uh, uh, assist us financially we are immensely grateful god bless you